guys welcome in this video i'm going to show you how you can use angular to connect to mysql server database using a node.js framework i already have done a similar tutorial where i have shown how you can connect your angular using node.js and graphql to almost any database like mongodb couchdb oracle sql uh, but this tutorial is very very specific i'll show you one real life example where you can use latest version of angular to connect to mysql server database and uh, i'll show i'll try to show you one complete CRUD operation um, you can do with this framework so in case if you don't don't already know what is angular angular is the framework is the front end framework designed developed and supported by google and i'm going to use the latest version angular 6 another thing i'm going to use on the server side is the node.js um, i'm going to use one more framework the middleware GraphQL is called GraphQL. If in case if you don't already know what GraphQL is, so GraphQL is a middleware design developed and supported by Facebook. The good thing with GraphQL is that um, uh, is what you see is what you get. So for example, you can use this middleware to connect to almost any database of your choice. Um, your front end is kind of a uh, back end independent. So you know, imagine you have a front end developers and they want to connect to your back end. So GraphQL helps you achieve that using a single set of code. Um, I have already used GraphQL to connect to a MongoDB, but this time, as I said, I'm going to try to connect to the MySQL server database uh, with the same set of code. Now, I'm going to include the link to my GitHub repository so that you can download the entire code and uh, make changes as per you need. So let's get started. Uh, I want to quickly show you what you're going to achieve by end of this video tutorial. As you can see, this is a very simple app. This is doing a simple login operation. Let me open the console. So in case, for example, um, if somebody doesn't already have an account, they can quickly go to the create account. And um, what this app does, it lets you register a new email ID. Now, if the email ID is already exists, it should come back with the error saying, OK, user ID is already taken. And if not, the user ID is the user ID is available, so that will you know make user uh, login. That will create a new login for that user. So in this case, see, I'm passing a wrong password, so it it again came back and saying user ID and password didn't match with the record. This time, let me pass um, let me pass the actual uh, user ID and password. But before I do that, let me uh, let me open a console window here, and uh, I want you to watch out that local storage area. Right now, as you see, this is blank. But the moment I log in, it should go back to the server. It will validate my user ID and password, and if the password is valid, it will issue me a JWT. That means like uh, it's a uh, JSON web token. It's an encrypted web token, and as you can see, it came back with the token. Now, um, the reason I want to do the CRUD operation like this, now every single change I want to make from the front end that Angular, suppose I want to update uh, another table in my SQL Server database, I'm going to use this token, and I'm going to append that with my form and send it to the server, so that before writing to the database, it can identify, okay, this is, the actual the user is already signed in. So basically, this is for the authentication. Um, that's why I set up the token like this. In case I already have a tutorial on the JSON Web Token, how you can set it up and you know how it is used to do the CRUD operation. Um, that's a separate uh, separate talk altogether. Uh, but I want to quickly mention that you know this is the ideal way of doing any CRUD operation. It doesn't matter like if we are using MySQL Server or MongoDB or any other database. The best practice is let's uh, issue always issue a token to your user front end and whatever request is coming from your front end always get a token then only you can authorize the, uh, that transaction is valid or not so that's a very usual great practice but that's what you're going to achieve um, let's get it started once you see the files and you see the things in action you will understand like you know how it is actually doing the CRUD operation so uh, before I start, I want to quickly show you a couple of things you will need. Of course, you will need a MySQL server. You will need, you will need Node.js. You will need Angular. Um, and you will need a GraphQL. 
Um, in case if you don't know already all of these things, if you don't have in-depth knowledge, don't worry about it. We are going to cover this uh, slowly or you know, once you get, see the course in action, and then it will make more sense to you. So let's get started. Um, first thing first, I'm going to show you, so let me log out from here. Okay. And uh, I'm going to my GitHub repository. Again, all of the course requires to do this simple spread operation. You will find everything out there. So whatever I'm going to discuss in this video, you are going to find everything out there. Okay, perfect. So this is the repository. Again, by end of this video, what I'm going to do in the video description, I'm going to include this course, uh, this this link to my video description, so that you can download it there. Okay. Now, uh, while we are, you know, for the first thing is you will need to download this course. There are a couple of things you will, a couple of ways, different ways you can download the entire code. If you already have Git installed, you can uh, just do a Git clone. If you don't have a Git installed, all you can do is download the zip and it will, you can download the entire source code um, in the zip file. And this is a very lightweight project. The whole project is, I believe, is a couple of uh, like you know, 100 KBs or 200 KBs. So I believe, you know, it should be a very quick installation for you guys. So let's do another thing you will need uh, to do this thing is the Visual Studio code. That's my favorite code editor. But if you have any other code editor or text pad or anything, you know, it's up to you. The only the, the, the reason I like a Visual Studio code so that, you know, it gives me uh, all the tools I need in one window. Um, I'm going to open a command prompt here. So that's another thing I can open as many command prompt as I want. So first thing is you need to go to the directory. So suppose this is the directory I want to include my app into this one. If you, as I said, if you already have the git installed, all you need to do git clone and uh, that's it. And give the path to that my GitHub repository. In, if you don't have the git, don't worry about that. Just go ahead and download the uh, zip. It will do the same thing. All you need to do once you have downloaded the zip, extract it to the one directory. But this time, because I already have the git, um, I'm going to clone this. And as you can see, this is a very, very lightweight project um, done. As you can see here, it created a new um, folder here and all the files are out there. So again, you don't need to make any notes. I have created the installation instruction. Um, you will see, and let me go through one, let me go through the instruction one by one. So this is the little writer write up about the, what this code does, uh, but basically, and the same code you can use for, to connect to any database of your choice. So for example, MongoDB or CouchDB or CouchBase or anything. But in this case, as I said, I'm going to use my SQL Server. So step number one, first thing first, you will need a database. If you don't have a database, then it's not going to work. So you can go to the MySQL Server. Again, I, this is not a MySQL tutorial, so I assume you already have one database installed somewhere. Um, but if not, then you can always download a MySQL copy and you know, you. You can use XAMPP server or WAMP server, and you can download it on your local drive. In my case, I already have hosted my uh, um, my database server. Let me show you where. So again, I'm using GoDaddy to host my um, my SQL database. Let me quickly show you how it looks like. Yes. So so for this tutorial. Um, you don't need anything special. Like I'm not going to ask you to create any tables, although you may be required to create the tables, but that will come on the later. Even if you don't create a table in this, it doesn't matter. Um, so I'm going to log into this database. As you can see, I already have this database. I'm using it for some other purpose, but here just pay attention to this table. It's called users tables. As you can see, I already have this table and uh, there are a couple of records in this table. We'll come back to this one, how this table are nice. And even I'm going to delete this table and I'll show you later, like, you know, how my system is going to recreate that. But for now, um, the first step is you need to have MySQL database installed somewhere. And once you have that one, second thing you will need, you will need the, um, you will need to know the credential. That means like you need to know where your database is hosted, the user ID and password, very basic, simple things. Second thing is, let's go back to the GitHub repository and see what else is required. Okay, so step number one, DB installation. Step number two is middleware installation. 
And again, you know, these are all the write-ups, you know, you don't need to go to everything, but uh, first thing first, you need to have a Node.js. Node.js is a JavaScript framework. Uh, it's a runtime script, you know, JavaScript engine, which lets you, you know, you can even create your own website on the Node.js, but, you know, I'm going to use it as a server side uh, framework. Okay. You can use any of these uh, uh, versions, like, you know, long-term support 8.11, or you can get the most latest current version, doesn't matter. Um, I already have the Node version installed here, the 10.9, but if you, you know, it's up to you. All you need to do is download it and just, just do like, you know, if you're on a Windows machine, uh, next, next, and same thing for the uh, Mac or uh, Linux machine. So it's not a rocket science here. Second thing you need is a Node.js installation. Okay, let's go back to um, to the installation instruction. You can go through this, you know, but uh, I'm going to show you things in action. So for example, once you have the Node.js installed, the first thing first you need to do is node-v. This will tell you what kind of node you have installed. If you do not see a node version here, you have a problem, go back and try to reinstall node, otherwise not going to work. Second thing is npm v is not required because npm comes bundled with node, but I have a user practice, I always do that. So I'm going to just check the npm version. Okay. Now let's go back to the installation instruction. There are a couple of things you will need. You will need Angular CLI, you will need Nodemon, and you will need course. Okay. So while I'm talking about it, let me just quickly first install this and then I can quickly talk about it, like, you know, why I require that. And uh, I prefer to, hyphen G means like, you know, I prefer to install it locally. Angular CLI is the, it will, what it's going to do is going to install the latest Angular version. Um, and the second thing is Nodemon. I'll tell you later what Nodemon is. But Nodemon is basically, you know, it's very simple. Suppose you, create a node version here and you do npm start, what nodemon is going to do. Uh, every time you make a change to your server side code, you always have to go back and stop the server and restart it. What nodemon does, you don't have to do that. You know, you just run the nodemon start and it watches for all the file changes. So it makes your development changes very easy. That's all it is. Course, I highly recommend you install course. Uh, you install this course. You know, what the example, what I'm going to do, it's not going to work without the course. Again, it's a MySQL, you know, it's a tutorial about how you are connecting to the Angular to MySQL. But in my opinion, all of these things are required to build a good production quality app. If you do not include these things, then um, I won't call it a complete cloud operation. These are all the things you will need to build a secure, um, to do a cloud secure cloud operations, okay? Now, once you see the things in action, you will understand it a little better. I already have all of these things installed, so I'm not going to install this one, but I expect you to do this. Hit enter and you know, wait for until the installation is finished. Okay, next thing. So then, you know, all of these things, you know, you can ignore that, but I'm going to just walk you through that anyway. As you said, like, as, as I've shown you, I already get cloned this. You might have already downloaded the entire copy of the source code. And as you can see, everything is under this, um, this directory. So. Let me cd into this one, GraphQL, okay? And as you can see inside this directory, there are two different directories. One is server, one is client. Let me show you what the uh, client is. So cd into uh, client, let me do a quick ls. And as you can see, oh, there's another Angular, okay. cd into Angular. So as you can see, my package.dsn is inside this Angular. So I want you to browse to this directory and then browse to CD into client, CD into Angular. And once you're inside this Angular direction, you should be able to, you should be at the path where you see the package.json. Next step is just do a simple NPM install. Okay. Again, um, let me do it, okay. So what it's going to do is going to take all, it's going to install all the uh, packages required by Angular framework. So while I'm doing that, instead of waiting, let me open another command prompt window. So this is what I'm doing. This is the client side of installation. Let me show you the server side. So same thing I'm going to do, cd into GraphQL, um, this repository. And then it, this time I'm going to the server directory. Let me do a quick ls. Perfect. And as you can see, I am able to see one package.json. Same thing here. 
I'm going to do an NPM list. Now both of my command prompt windows are busy installing something. So while we are waiting, let me show you quickly walk you through what these files are. So what this server that is going to do is going to create a node.js server. And what this client is, client is, is the simple application what I'm showing you here, uh, this piece. Again, this is a lot bigger application, but you know, in this code, it's just showing you that login page, uh, sign up page, and uh, the settings space. There are only basically three steps, uh, three pages is showing you. Okay. Now, on the client side, as you can see, there are a lot of different, um, you know, um, sorry, this is the server side, I believe. Okay, this is server package.json. So on the server package.json, as you can see, for MySQL connections, I'm going to use SQLize and MySQL 2. Again, I'm going to walk you through this slowly. Once you see the code, like you know, you'll understand why these two packages are required and how I'm going to use that. Okay. But before I start, I want to show you one package. I'm I'm using .env and course. Okay. So what .env is, I intend to you know. So for example, you have connections um, to MySQL server or MySQL database or MongoDB. So I intend instead of hard coding those things into the file section. I always write everything into a variable. So I created a file called environment variable file, and this is where I write all my connections here. So in case if you want to use some other database, you know, you just quickly come back here and make changes and everything will be done. Again, coming back to this one, for now, um, I'll walk you through this again what this JWT secret is. But for example, in this case, for the MySQL server, I have a MySQL database I have I keep on calling MySQL server. It's a MySQL database I have created. Uh, you need to know the DB strings here. So all you need to do, uh, replace it with the actual username, password, your database name, where your database is hosted, and you can leave this to MySQL. So because this is from the, I downloaded it from the GitHub, and of course this doesn't have the actual database strings here. Um, these are dummy things here. So let me quickly, what. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace this thing with the actual uh, settings from the GoDaddy. Okay, so it's just going to take one minute, a quick minute. Okay, perfect. And I'm going to close this. Okay, so all I did, I put, um, I replaced the environment variable, the dummy environment variable, with the actual environment variable. Okay, now let's see. Okay, cool. As you can see, my client installation is still working. But my server installation is done. Okay. So now the next thing you need to do, uh, let me start my server. Okay. So let me walk through the server. Here, as you can see, .env file I already fixed it. I changed all the environment variable here. Index.j. So here, if I go to my um, server directory here, let me open the package.json. As you can see, for any node uh, Node.js framework. So first thing is you can do npm start and is going to start your index.js file. As you can see, index.js is my entry point here. But remember, I installed the nodemon. What nodemon does, suppose you know I do an npm start and I make changes here, it's not going to reflect the changes. I have to kill the session and then restart the server. So instead of doing the npm start, on the server side, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do nodemon start. And again, you have to be in the same server directory here. Okay? So, um, same directory where your package.json is hosted. Okay. Let's see. So what this known one start is doing is going to start this index.js file. Again, you know, you I'll walk you through each and every file so that you can see how the current operation is done, how it's connecting to the actual MySQL server here. But uh, let me just like quickly uh, do the reverse engineering. Sorry, it's not a code along session, but it's a code walkthrough session. There's a too much code to write, so it's very difficult for me to, you know, create something and you know show you how everything is done is going to take me a couple of you know trust me i tried doing that it, it took me like five or six videos to you know do that so instead i thought like okay let me do a quick code walkthrough and um, so that you know you can just download the code and try to understand how it's working okay let's see so as soon as i do this node mon start is throwing me a couple of errors it's totally okay totally fine okay but quickly let's see what these errors are so first thing is, is saying is having trouble connecting to the MongoDB and uh, what else? Yeah. Okay. So let me show you what, where this error is coming from. Okay. 
So let's go to the index.js file and I'm going to minimize my uh, my command prompt window here. Okay. So let's let's walk let me walk you through the this code. First thing is in this and this is a very standard uh, Node.js uh, server here. The only difference is I'm using GraphQL on top of that. And I'll tell you why exactly I'm using GraphQL. So first thing is first, as you can see, it's, it creates an Express web server. And all it does, and later on, you know, I'm taking that Express web server, and I'm listening to this port. Um, that's it. So that's what the whole, uh, that's what uh, the Express web server is doing. Other thing I'm doing, I'm using GraphQL. So I'm using a GraphQL um, schema here. That's what I actually um, my front end framework will be connected. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, .env is where all the connections are written here. So I'm using the .env here. Course is another thing is like cross origin request. The reason I'm using course is I don't want any, suppose if you're not using course. So the let me uncomment this one and let me comment this code okay so what actually i did i'm telling my node.js web um, server app to 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 be able to listen to any url so for example suppose you want to ask somebody you want anyone to access your node.js server from any website is going to allow every single website on the planet to access your node.js server in production setting of course you don't want it you have to be very specific and do not allow every website to access your Node.js server. So this is the reason, you know, uh, app.use, that's why, why you have to use the course. So here, what I'm doing in this code, let me just back up, like, you know, so here I'm just going, okay, only these websites are allowed to access my Node.js server. Now, what these things are, again, I have written everything to the environment variable. So that's the reason in the environment variable, as you can see, I have created this string. Okay, let me copy this over and let me show you what this thing. So these are my allowed origins. I'm only allowing these websites to access my Node.js web server. Again, if you're in a development, then you can include the localhost 4200 or localhost 33000, whatever you want. But definitely, you know, you do not want these things to um, go to your production. So that's the only role uh, this course app dot um, use course is doing. Okay, now let's go back to that MongoDB action here. Again, MongoDB, that's not the subject here, but uh, I want to show you, um, you know, there are two different schemas you can use. First is schema is MongoDB. Second is schema is MySQL. Sorry, there's a title, let me fix it, okay. So because this tutorial about the, is about the MySQL, I'm going to comment this line and I'm going to comment this. So all it is doing is saying a schema, and let's use the MySQL DB schema. And I'll tell you what this schema is in a minute. But for now, let's just set up the MySQL uh, connections here. Okay. That's it. That's all you need to make changes to this file. Okay. Now let me show you what this MySQL schema is. Um, right now, what you can do, you can directly connect. You know, actually, you'll be using MySQL two or SQLize to connect to your um, to your MySQL server. But I'm telling you, you know, I'm using GraphQL in between, so that's why the way you write the code in GraphQL, you have to write a schema, then you have to write a resolver, resolver connect, and then you do the connectors. So the the reason, you know, you I prefer to write code this way, so that you can use the same code in MongoDB or if you want MySQL, it's very easy to switch to the different databases. But again, that's not the topic here. Let's let's just stick to the MySQL DB here. So I'm going to uncomment this. And I will show you how this make MySQL DB schema is written. So if I go to the under the schema folder, I'm going to ignore MongoDB. Let's go to the MySQL DB schema. And as you can see, in MySQL DB schema, there are only a couple of methods here. One, two, three, four, five. So, so let me just to quickly do one more thing here. Just for the experiment, I'm going to see GraphQL equals to true. And I'm going to save this go to the command prompt window. Let me show you what it does. Again, it's going to give you a couple of errors here, 
but don't worry about this because these all all of these errors are it will go away because you know either the connections are not set up properly or things like that but otherwise i have tested this code i have uh, deployed this code on the product and it worked without any flaw okay so it works perfectly fine if you uh, download this code and it's not working just go to my github repository here and open an issue uh, let me show you how you can do that so go to this GitHub repository where you have downloaded the entire project. Go to the issues, create a new issue, and uh, definitely I'll I'll respond to your message. I'll reply. Uh, you know, if you have any error, just po post that error. Make sure you include the error here, and I'll be happy to help you out. Okay. So let's go back to the code. So here, next thing is let's go to the MySQL DB schema. So as I was showing you, there are six different versions here. Let me go and show you one more thing. I hope this local host column 3000 slash GraphQL. So basically, what this the graph IQL, what it will do. Um, hang on, I apologize, something is not working here. Code. Let me make sure that I'm passing the 3000 code here. Okay. Okay. Let me restart my app. Okay. So while it's restarting, um, I was going through this schema here. Let me show you, you know, one method at a time. So you know this so for example suppose i am asking my user to sign up for the first time so it doesn't even exist in this form i all i am asking my user to pass my username one you any name or email or password uh, password here okay so that's the three different things this this thing is asking so here what i'm going to do first thing is if you want to make sure that the user exists or not so what this schema is doing this is the entry point of the schema as you can see, basically your front end code is trying to access this method. And let me quickly show you what the, how this front end code is making that connection. Okay. Sorry, it's a little confusing, but once you three, see the things in action. So for example, let's go to the sign up um, page here. So let's go back to the share login and let's go back to the sign up dot component. So this is the sign dot component HTML. What this file is doing basically is all it's doing is doing on submit and is submitting that form data. So let's see what this on submit is doing. So if you go to the on submit, you can see there's a backend service is written, it's called create user. And let me go to this definition. What this create user is doing is calling that Apollo GraphQL mutation, okay? And it's saying, let's create this user and it's calling this query. Create user underscore M, okay? Create user underscore M. And as you can see, it's, it's, this is saying add user M. So basically this code is not going to change even if you are using any databases. So in this case, I'm using MySQL. So let me show you what this thing is. So the, the basically uh, the way uh, your Angular is making a connection is saying, go, you know, it's, it's doing an HTTP connection here. So that HTTP connection is like a post method or get method. But in this case, it's an HTTP post method. So here it comes and uh, see, this is the method is calling add user underscore M. So let me go back to that front end file here, the backend services I was mentioning. So create user, as you can see, create user. Oops. Okay, see that add user M underscore m means mutation and underscore q means is just query so that's the way i've written the q uh, you know any mutation that means if you're you know adding a new user or add, updating a user so i i try to indicate it with underscore and that means it's a mutation so in this case i am trying to access i'm going to the node.js server and i'm saying okay all i'm saying i need to access this method add user m and i'm passing three different variable parameters here name email 
and password. And I expect an email in return. So when the user logs in, I don't see this always a very bad idea if you want the password back. Never send or uh, you know never ask server to send a password back. Okay. So in all of my method, all the password stays in the database. So but in this case, I'm saying okay, take the name, take the email, and take the password and return an email to me. So let's go back and see what uh, what this method does on the server side. Add user underscore m. So if I go back to the server here. Okay, add user n. As you can see, this is a mutation. If you understand only one method, you're going to understand everything. So all of the methods are very, very similar. With little changes, but you know, uh, most of the methods are same. So again, underscore m means this is a mutation. So what this mutation is, what it looks like, it expects three different parameters, name, email, and password. And it returns back a, a component, a, a, a type is called user, which is looks like, this one id name email password roles okay so let's go to the add user m it takes the parameters it takes the argument it takes the context now it's a very important topic to understand what context is context is is actually the remember i was showing you that json web token so in any time any front end it makes a connection to the server it always sends the data into the body so your body will have name, email, and password, but the context is the header level information. It's going to send you that context. Context is the actual token you get it from the client. So basically, this is what it takes, and it calls another another method. It's called a resolver, add user underscore r. So let's go to this method, what add user underscore r does. So add user underscore r, if you browse through the definition, you will see it is written into a resolver. Okay. So it's, um, let's go to the MySQL Server DB resolver here. Okay. Sorry, it's a little confusing, but once you understand the flow, so index.js calls a schema, a schema calls a resolver, resolver calls a connector. Very simple, a schema, resolver, connector. So now a schema calls the resolver. And it will make sense once you see you know, what actually it does. It takes add user underscore r. It takes, okay, give me all the input, and the, if the input is valid, that means it's not a blank, then go and proceed to the next step. That's all it is doing. Very simple method. But why we write a resolver? Let me show you one thing. So for example, suppose I'm changing my password here. Suppose I'm already logged in, I want to change my password here. So instead of add user, suppose I want to use a method called update user r. So in this case, update user r, see what it does? It takes the context, it takes the ID, it says, okay, check the token. So it takes the context and it try to find it out that your token you you supplied from your client is valid or not, and that's the beauty of that's the beauty of it. Like I highly recommend any crowd operation doing it coming from any of your client. Always, always, always check the token. You do not want your website or your database to be hacked from some other client. So this is again not a hundred percent foolproof method, but this is the industry recommendation. Like ninety nine percent of the independent website you will find like you know they use the json web token here it's a very popular encrypted system so i want you to use that so for example somebody hacked into this database they got this token and they try to you know access your website from uh, from some other server or they want to steal your data in that case it will always throw back and it says you know what it's not going to work because your your um, jwt token is not valid anymore so that's what it is doing so let's go back to that again, simple method here. Go to the add user R. So that was in the case of update user R. Add user R means the token doesn't even exist. This is the first time the user has come in. So all I need to do is trying to figure it out that you are supplying me a good quality data or not. If the user is coming to update his credential, then you only need to check the JSON web token. Otherwise, this is the first time user you are creating a brand new user. So let's just take the input and proceed. You are saying, okay, input looks good. That means you have already sent me the, these three different uh, parameters like name, email, and password. So it will it will say, okay, let's proceed to the next step. Now here you will see add user R here. So what is the next method here? Let's go back to that schema. You can see, so add user M, what it did, it called a resolver and it 
said add user C. If the, if the resolver says everything is okay, now let's go to the add user C. Now what is add user C? Add user C is coming from the connector. So again, schema, schema to resolver, resolver to connector. So it might be again little confusing, but please try to get a grasp of it. It's for your own good so that you can, you know, this is the production quality uh, code. Um, so now let's go to the MySQL Server DB database. This is where actual connection to the database is happening. Now, let me show you add user C. What this add user C does. So um, in this case, I'm just like, you know, so first time any user logs in, suppose you want to create a new field. I'm just assigning everybody. There's a field called roles and I want everybody in my um, database let me show you the data. I hope I'm still logged in. Yes, I am. So I want everybody to have a dummy role. Okay. So this is what it is doing. It's you know it's up, appending a field roles into that dummy into that input field and it's saying okay every brand new user should have a dummy role. Next thing is um, let me walk you through from the starting how it is making connection. So this is how the MySQL server uh, configuration is done. First thing you need is dot env. Again, remember like dot env is actually where it, you have the your user ID and password and everything. Second thing is you call it a SQLize. So again, um, if you remember in the package.json, I stored that SQLize package here, SQLize. This is what it's using here, okay? Let's go back to this code. Okay, SQLize. So in the SQLize, all I'm doing, I'm passing a DB name, username, password, and the host name, dialect. Remember, all of these things uh, are your environment uh, credentials. So I'm passing all of these things here and making connection here. That's all it is. Then it creates, I create a schema of SQLize schema here. Okay. So all of these things are appended to this constant and I created this schema here. Next thing is I authenticate that. Authentication means that you know, um, it will. This step, what it will do, it will actually connect to the MySQL server, a uh, MySQL database, and it will authenticate that. If there is an error, it will throw an error. Otherwise, it will make a connection. Now, next th next thing is again, I'm just using one table as an example. In this table, this is called users table here. Okay? So basically, this table is very simple. It has name, email, password. All of the extra fields, ID. So ID is an auto incremental ID. It does not come from your, um, if you don't want it, you, you can ignore this, but I, in case I wanted this, I just, uh, I, I include these things here. Roles is a field where I'm including anytime, first time a user is created, I'm giving a dummy role, okay? And then these two are extra fields I'm, I'm including created and updated. This is a very, very handy, uh, very, uh, you know, it's good to have these two fields so that you can record when the actual user was created and when it was updated. So again, if you don't need that, just ignore this one. But in my case, I'm just adding those things here. Next thing you need to do, you need to define your table here. Again, in the beginning of this uh, tutorial, as I told you, you don't need this table at all. You can delete it right now from the database. All you need is database connection. But once you execute this code, it can, this code is capable, the SQLize and MySQL2 is capable of creating it, making a connection to your MySQL database and creating a table over there. So here, as you can see, I'm defining a constant user here and define a user. You have to define all of your fields here, name, email, password, and roles. One thing I want to mention, I intentionally included this roles here. So for example, suppose in case you want to include an array inside that uh, inside a table. So uh, like for example, a person can have one or two more roles. So like in this case, a person is an admin or a person is a, a, a supervisor. So how you'll include that? So that's the intentionally I create, try to create this field and I want to show you like, you know, how exactly this thing is done, how to store array in, inside the table. So these are the four different fields required in my user, um, uh, user definition here. Next thing is, okay. So this is the code I have in, in commented here. But you know, first time if you are trying this, if you uncomment this, what this code will, will do, this is the code user dot sync force equals to false. So what it will do if the if if suppose the table doesn't even exist, if you execute this one, 
is going to create this table automatically. So that's the beauty of it. You don't need to go and create the table here. If you first time, you know, whenever you finish the installation, you can just write this code, user.create method. Again, user is your schema here, okay? And then once you call the create method on this one, it's going to automatically create this table um, in your database. You don't need to do that. But again, remember, always do it only once. Because I've already done that, you don't need to do this over again. So once you're, uh, there are two different ways. You can always, you know, go back and uh, go to your MySQL server and you can export the definition. You can import it from there. But, you know, either way, either way is fine. And or, or you can create the table like this. Next thing is, <clears throat> okay. One thing I want to tell you. So suppose you are storing an array into this table. Okay, admin and supervisor. Now, these are separated by comma. Now you want to, uh, once you want to fetch it to the database, the fetch it to the front end, you are, you know, so you, you call the split method. So what this split method is going to do is going to treat this two, is going to take this string and it's going to split it into two different values and it will create a, um, an array for you, okay? But again, this is for the, on the server side code, uh, sorry. This is when you are fetching the user. This is the get method. So basically, what else I can tell you? So this is the method I was showing you, add user underscore C. As you can see, it takes an input, it assigns a role to this one, and it creates a new user. So again, user is your schema. All you need to do, let user request to new user input, and you take this schema, try to find one, again, I. Remember, I was showing you like if, if the email ID already exists, I want you to throw back an error saying, okay, you know what, this email, this error is, this email already exists, so this email already is already took, taken. So in that case, as you can see, find one where email is like equals to input dot email. Okay? Dot then press. So if if it finds that email, all I'm going to do, I'm going to return the null here. And if you, if I go back to my front end code, it says, okay, if this is null, that means like, you know, this is already is already taken. If not, suppose it doesn't, the user dot find one, it returns a null, it goes to the else statement. And then in else statement, all you need to do is user dot create. And very simply, let me just like, you know, get rid of this one. So very simply, again, it will take the schema, it will create, um, create that row. So every time somebody creates an add user C, is going to create that row inside that MySQL um, MySQL uh, table. Okay, MySQL. You're going to insert a record to this MySQL. Server. Okay, MySQL database. And every time it's going to create that. So don't worry about this field. This is an auto. Let me show you the structure of this one. So as you can see, this is an auto increment field. So every time you do that, it's going to automatically create one extra row with a new ID here. As you can see, I already deleted a, an ID here, but this thing is, is smart enough to figure it out what the new ID it should give. So for example, if I delete this nine and if I create a new record here, it's going to be still give the 10 because it understand like it knows what is the next ID I should give it, uh, give it to the new, new record. Okay, so basically that's pretty much it. That's uh, all it takes to do a simple CRUD operation here. Again, I want to just like, you know, quickly, uh, this thing might be a little confusing at the beginning that you know how you are your index.js is calling the schema and the schema is connecting to the resolver and the resolver is connecting to the, uh, is connecting to the connector. But you know, once you get used to this one, this, this becomes very repetitive. There's not much code in there. But again, the only reason you can avoid all this, you don't need to write the schema and resolver. You can directly take this connector here and put it into, into the index.js. But again, the only reason I'm going to do that because you know I want to validate each and every HTTP transaction coming from the client and validate whether it has the valid token or not. So that's the only reason I'm doing this. So a schema, a schema connects to the resolver and resolver connect to the um, connector, which actually is making connections to the uh, MySQL database. So uh, again. Um, let me let me show you one more method. So for example, I'm logged in now, okay? And I want to update my own um, password here. So for example,
Okay, perfect. So here it takes me to the setting page. And for example, uh, here I want to suppose change my password here. I want to give some other password. So here what I'm doing, let me go to back to the client. Client. And this is my settings page. So again, as you can see settings, and if you ever like wonder like how I'm figuring, trying to figure it out, which page I am. So go to the app routing module look at the settings and you will see I'm under the settings component and the settings component I can find settings settings dot component because this is my code so I'm quite familiar with that but, uh, but otherwise you know that's how you you follow along and as you can see there's not much to this one login sign up and setting there are only three um, major pages but what is required so it's a bare minimum you know skeleton type of code here the only thing is I have used angular material to give it a, a, a nice look um, so let's go to the settings page as you can see, let's go to settings, settings.html. So once I click the on submit, let me show you the on submit method here. So on submit method is calling the update user method here. So let me go to update user. And as you can see, update user is calling a mutation, which is called update user n. So and it's sending it three different variables here, name, email, and password. So now let me show you what this update user M is. So let's go back to the server in .js. And as you can see, I'm using a uh, MySQL schema here. Let's go to the MySQL DB schema. Let's see where this update user M is. Again, update user M is, is a mutation. What it does, it takes the arguments, it, it takes parents and argument and the context, Context is actually the JSON web token I we talked about, and uh, argument is the parameters is sending. It calls a resolver. What resolver says, okay, I'm passing you the context, I'm passing you all the variables here. That means the name, email, and password. And if everything is successful, then go to this method. Otherwise, you know, get out of this one. So let me show, let me go back to the resolver again. So let's go to the update user underscore or resolver here. It says, okay, you are giving me context. That means the JSON web token. And you are giving me the input, which is name, email, and password. And you are giving me the connector query. Connector query. So it checks the, it, it takes the context, it checks the token. If the token is valid, it says, okay, you are good. That means go back to the con connector query, the reply. If the token is not valid, it will come back and say, look at the check token, and it will say, it will throw an error. It will say, you know what, stop here. You cannot go to the connector here because your token is not valid. So update user R, token is valid. It says, okay, now let's go to the next step. Now, what was the next step here? Next step was the update user C. So that means that's all resolver is doing. So let's go to the update user C here. Let's go to the connector one more time. Update user C. Okay, get it, update user C, update user C. Again, everything is so here in this initially what I all I did in this code make a connection to the MySQL database. Second thing is I, I defined a constant here. Actually, this is my user schema. This is the table, actual table. And this code was only used once to create a table. Otherwise, that now the table already exists, you don't need that. So now everything is will be dependent. All the methods I'm going to call is the user. So first time. If you are adding a user, I called it a user.create. If I, I need to find something, I called it, you know, find dot one. Okay. Find one, sorry, not find that one. Here, update. So again, the flow is I'm trying to call update user. Update user is what? Update method. So let's go to the update user. All is doing, you see that user dot update and it's passing all the input parameters here. Okay. But pay attention to this one. Here I'm calling a where statement where id equals to input dot id. So pretend it's very similar to writing an SQL, like you know, saying uh, uh, say update user. If if I have to write an SQL here, I will say update user and I have values and uh, sorry, update users and I pass this values where id equals to this input dot id. But this is a different way of writing SQL here. 
because I'm using the Node.js framework here. So that's how you write the update statement. Very simple. Um, I want to cover one last method here, update user admin. So remember we talked about like, you know, uh, suppose I don't want, you are an ordinary user and I'm an admin. Suppose you come back and say, okay, I want to uh, give an admin uh, roles to myself. Suppose you, somebody hacked into your um, front end and they try to assign a new role to that one. All it is doing is saying, okay, this is a little special method, but if you understand the, like all it is doing, let's go back to this one. This is saying, Okay, give me the context. That means a JSON web token. Give me the values. And these are the admin and user. Suppose you have to an admin and user to assign a new role to yourself. That's all it is doing. Otherwise, if you don't want to, you know, this kind of functionality, ignore this one. All of your methods should look like this one. But this is a little special method, little convenient method in case if you want to apply a role-based authentication into your system. Um, that's all it is. So basically, this is a very simple app. Uh, sorry, there's a lot of code, a lot of things to walk through, and it's very difficult for me to do a code along. Um, I know, like, you know, once you do a code along, it's very helpful to you. You can understand a little better. Um, but uh, because, uh, you know, there's a too much code. So that's why I thought, like, you know, code walkthrough will be a little more helpful in this case. So just, like, download this code and try to follow the instructions. And if you get any trouble, again, you know, just go back to the, my GitHub repository and open a ticket. Um, what I will do, if you have any problem, you know, I will definitely solve that out. And again, you know, uh, just keep one more thing in mind, like, you know, right now, Angular 6 is the latest version, uh, but in future, if something changes, like, you know, I'll always come back and update my GitHub repository to reflect the new, uh, the latest version of the course. So please feel free to, you know, um, always, you know, use this repository to download the latest version. Um, this code is very much for the, um, MongoDB, and I have a separate uh, YouTube tutorial on the MongoDB. But again, the same thing can be used for the MySQL as I've shown you. The only difference is go to the index.js. This is how you switch. So if you want to go back to the MongoDB, uncomment this, comment this. As simple as that. That's all you need. And then, you know, it, it makes sure that you have all the proper strings, like means like DB connections and everything is defined. So, um, uh, I think that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I hope like there's a lot more to cover, but in this like given this time window, that's the only thing I could uh, I could show you in this tutorial. There are more tutorials coming in near future where I will be doing more complete um, applications, uh, and then I can show you you know uh, a, a more enhanced version of the current application. But I hope this uh, basics help you. And again, if you have any questions or any comments or any um, uh, any any contribution you want to do, please feel free to leave your comments and issues on this uh, GitHub repository. Once again, thank you for watching.